and I'll read uh, the opening section from a novel called Robbers. Okay, I'm going to persist against my better judgment, which I do <laughs> a lot anyway. Um, they rode down into the Colorado River Valley well after midnight. Beneath them, the never-ending highway, above the vault of the earth and its vast curvature of silence. On the outskirts of town, they pulled into the side drive of a Motel 6, and parked behind a dumpster. I slept there with the top down, a barred owl calling out who, 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 who from the tree line in the dark. A fingernail moon dangled among the stars. Toward morning they lay dew damped in the chill, then awakened at sunrise, the two of them, one no good and the other merely bad, to eat the breakfast special at Ah. So began another day without aim or purpose, a day as any before, with no thought of thereafter. In this way, they passed a week in Austin, during which time they became restless. Eddie didn't intend to shoot the guy, didn't mean to rob him either. What happened was, they were sliding south down Lamar after rib sandwiches and beer at T-Bone's Barbecue House. Going no place particular on a lazy day in May. Laid back under a baby blue sky, the sun floating in it like a warm dab of butter. Cruising the street past used car lots, flying plastic banners, the Whole Foods Market, record stores, saloons. Moving through bright southern heat, southern light. Vehicle exhaust rising acrid off asphalt, the hypnotic afternoon post potato haze. Eddie and Ray Bob jazzing in low gear, radio on soft, Lyle Lovett. They rolled on southward through the commercial verge, across the Colorado Bridge above a shimmering turquoise river. Upstream, high green tree banks flanking the course in a solitary racing shell, sculling the windskipped surface, a waterborne centipede. Downstream, bridges over First Street and Congress in the snaggletooth profile of the glassy city center. Austin, state capital, university town. Former counterculture magnet and slacker haven now bawling the jack on a full tilt bender. Sucking wind into the onslaught of money, the strip mall gangbang straddling the balcony's fall. The mellow, chilled out days knew a mythic history. Silicon Gulch now, high tech hysteria and the California influx. A city overrun by cyber okies on the rebound. Two generations after the Dust Bowl Western plunge, returning flush, pockets stuffed, with plundered yelp, come back to take Austin mainstream and succeeding beyond a few long-haired relics holed up in Canyon University enclaves, the only surviving outlaw instincts careen through a juicy music scene in the rambunctious downtown club district. Rebellious, tattooed youth there possessed of mutinous ideas and unencumbered time. Elsewhere, Jack Lake politicians seeking cool capital cuties and dot-com commandos stroking barephobic bulls. Free market, luxury for profit unleashed. To this scene come Eddie and Ray Bob, outsiders from the rural frontier, from the unseen and forgotten bumfuck outskirts of the urban media landscape, rubbernecking the city, seeing what it's about, not much impressed. Just more folks humping the dollar. Two men alien among distant kindred, young and unemployed and broke, trawling boredom after a late breezy lunch, scoping the street past fast food joints and pawn shops in a boosted El Dorado convertible. When Ray Bob says, give me a smoke, house, 
Eddie fished the packet from his t-shirt pocket, crushed it, tossed it over the side, said, I'm out, pull into the 7-Eleven. Raybot wheeled the caddy ragtop into the empty lot, parked nose up to double glass doors, plastered with signs advertising RC colas by the 12th pack. He shoved the gear shift into park and let the motor out. Listen, Raybot said, don't buy those fucking straights, man. Give me some filters. Eddie on the sidewalk put a boot on the bumper and rolled a Zippo lighter across the back of one hand. Man, you know I smoke strings. He said, you want some filters, give me some money. I'm on broke. Eddie shrugged, well, all I got is $4, man. I'm buying strings. Well, fuck you, Ray Bob said. Yeah, well, up here, sideways, asshole. Oh, in your mama's mouth. I already tried it. I ain't surprised, Ray Bob said. How was it? His face serious. Yours was better, said Eddie. No teeth. Yeah, well, I'll try our pussy next time. Them talking that way because they were running buddies. Copper cowbells jangled on the door when Eddie went inside. Kaleidoscopic view, swaz consumer swaz on enough. Anything you wanted in there racked up tight to please the eye and move fast. He paused, shaking his head, and stood at the counter between the lotto ticket stand and a display of Lone, chart, Lone Star keychains saying, give me a pack of camel straights. The clerk, a plump young man with burnished bronze skin and a black mustache, either Indian or Pakistani, laid the pack on the counter and rang it up. Four dollars and one cent, he said. Eddie glanced at the register readout. Well, I got four dollars here, partner. Where's the spare penny bucket? The man pointed at an empty plastic ashtray. All out. Hey, no problem, Eddie said. I'll catch you next time. And the clerk put a hand on the pack of camels and pulled it back to his side, saying, it's four dollars and one cent. Eddie looked at him. You gonna hold up this deal over a penny? The young man adjusted the collar of his red 7-Eleven shirt, gazing somewhere over Eddie's left shoulder as though preoccupied, as if he didn't care, saying, that is what it costs. Eddie frowned, not believing it. Flipped the top of the Zippo open and shut in one hand. Snap, snap. He said, man, you jerking my chain. I am jerking nothing. Well, the hell you ain't. What kind of fucking country you come from? A good country. The clerk meeting his eyes then for a moment before turning to put the pack back on the shelf. He faced the counter again, splayed both dark brown hands flat on the surface, fingernails ivory as bone, hair black as creosote. Features resolutely braced, maybe defiant. Very fine country, he said, where we pay for what we get. Hot flash and spasm slip slided over Eddie's shoulders and crawled up his neck and hit his jaw. He eyeballed the guy. You giving me the red eyes, partner. Listen to me. This is America. Give me them cigarettes. Four dollars and one cent, he said. I ain't believing this, said Eddie. Only the guy didn't budge, not one word, just standing there like a chocolate deputy do right. The corner of his mouth lifting slightly, either a smirk or a twitch. Eddie said, God damn it to hell. And that's when he hoisted a leg and reached into his boot. He pulled out a 22 revolver, an old Colt police positive with a four inch barrel, looked like a toy. He pointed it at the guy, arms straight out, finger on the trigger, said, Give me them fucking cigarettes. Robbery, the man squawked. He stared at the gun, dark eyes blinking, teeth his upper lip, his jaw thrust forward. He said, I call the police, get your license plate. So Eddie pulled the trigger. A sharp crack in the barrel kicking up and the bullet caught the clerk square in the forehead. His head snapped back, a small black hole in the bronze curvature. He stood there with his hands on the counter a moment, eyes crossed, and slid down the f onto the floor out of sight. Eddie leaned over the counter and looked down. The guy lay on his side on a thick rubber floor mat, head across one arm, as if taking a nap. You dumb shit, said Eddie. Look what you did. And he reached over the open space and took a pack of camels off the shelf and left the four dollars on the counter. He slipped the gun down his boot and went outside, cowbells clanging behind. He got into the caddy. What the fuck you do? said Ray Bob, shoot somebody? 
cocksucker wouldn't give him the cigarettes. No shit. Because I didn't have a penny. Ray Bob Grunt. Man. Don't fuck with a man in the smokes. Man, oh man, Eddie said, I thought they trained them guys better. You fucking believe it? I believe it. Where's the money? I left it on the counter, Eddie said. Not that money. Ray Bob drumming the steering wheel with both hands. The register money. It's in the register. Where do you think? Eddie tamped the pack of camels on the back of one wrist, tore open the cellophane with his teeth. His hands were shaking. I went in for cigarettes, he said, and I got cigarettes. Goddamn straights, too, Ray Bob wagged his head. Man, I told you, filter shit, I gotta do everything myself. And he opened his door of the caddy, still idling in park, and legged it inside, griping. He returned a minute later, carrying a plastic sack, bulging with dollar bills and rolls of coins and loose change, with a carton of marbles tucked into an armpit. He sat behind the steering wheel, counting the money. Eddie exhaled a thin stream of smoke, snapped the zippo open and shut it, said, don't you reckon we ought to be heading out? Just a second. I'll count that shit later, man, I ain't going nowhere. Neither is that A-Rap in there, Ray Bob said, he did. Well, I reckon he is, I plugged him in the head, and Ray Bob snorted and said, that'll sure do it. He tucked the plastic bag under the seat, put the car in reverse, and hit the brake. He peered through the windshield at the storefront, saying, Damn it, to hell, I should have got some beer. I ain't thirsty, Eddie said. Let's get. They rode on down south the moor in the slow lane, with the sky spreading softly overhead, transparent and cloudless, a pale blue altitude without end, and the sun suspended in it. A radio on low with Dwight Yoakam singing about love come and gone. They didn't listen and they didn't talk. They were moving and that was enough. Going anywhere and everywhere, going nowhere in particular. The motor of the cat had purring beneath the hood. Down near the Brody Oak shopping center, Eddie said, Man, ain't this some wedding? Ray Bob nodded. It is at that, Hoss. Give me a smoke. Open up that carton. Eddie tore out the end of the cardboard cart and handed Ray Bob a hard pack of Marlboros. His hands were still trembling. How much in the sack, he asked. Ray Bob shrugged. I didn't finish counting. He was in such a hurry, not much. He must have just made a, a, a deposit. He pulled the cellophane off cigarettes and leaned sideways with the wind to whip it back past his shoulder, saying, 40, 50 bucks, maybe less. Shit, said Eddie. For that, you're gonna make me an accessory to robbery? That wasn't robbery, Ray Bob said. You can't rob a dead man. The hell you can't, said Eddie. Well, you can't. Bullshit, said Eddie. They got a law for everything. 